So I started my, uh, my art collection Rehumanized because like many of you, I wanted to change the world. I thought I had something to say, something powerful about sexual objectification, human value, and self-worth. But after working on Rehumanized for a while, I started to realize that I was the audience who needed to hear his message first. So when they asked me to come share a little bit about what I've learned with you today, I knew I had a choice. I could hide behind my accomplishments and achievements to look cool and advance my career, or I could just be really honest, lighting myself on fire with the hopes of connecting with you today, which is what my art's really about. So I don't want to talk about changing the world. I want to show you how to do it. This is what it looks like to light myself on fire. You might have noticed I have a bald spot in the back of my head. I have an autoimmune disorder called alopecia. Basically, my immune system attacks itself and I lose random patches of hair for no reason. It happens overnight, it's kind of weird. I know it's just hair, I know it's no big deal, and I know how I look doesn't really matter, but then again, what I say I know and what I actually believe is not the same thing, is it? I know it's possible to accept myself with these weird spots on my head, but it's hard. I get uncomfortable and self-conscious going out in public without fixing my hair or wearing a hat. I get embarrassed because I don't really believe that how I look doesn't matter. So my alopecia is a constant reminder and invitation for me to stop putting so much value and self-worth in how I look. It's a daily opportunity for me to accept myself just as I am, bald spots and all, or something like that. Because most of the time, I just throw on a hat and forget about it. So I can get on with inviting others into self-acceptance and vulnerability. <laughs> instead of going there for myself. Because I'd rather be the good-looking guy that says, beauty is only skin deep. <laughs> I want to be the accomplished artist who says, just daring enough to put yourself out there. Not getting recognized, that's what matters. I want to be the guy who has it all, so I can tell everyone else that life is about more than having it all. <laughs> I'm okay with others not fitting in as long as I do. I'm truly grateful for the honor of being up here today, but I have to admit, this is how I like it. Being in the spotlight, <laughs> so I can tell others who aren't in the spotlight that being in the spotlight doesn't really matter. It's as if I want to take a stand against the status quo by fitting into the status quo just to cover my bases. <laughs> Seriously, I want to change the world by lighting the way for others with a flamethrower. Lighting them on fire, right? <laughs> Instead of myself. Because it's so much easier to be peddlers of change than it is to let change hit home in our own lives. To be tourists on a landscape of self-worth and enoughness trying to sell others a brand of belonging and acceptance that we've yet to buy for ourselves. But the thing is, if we want to change the world, if you want to light the way for others, you got to light yourself on fire first. I've had a really successful career. I've worked with some incredibly talented people. I've experienced wealth and power and fame and everything that comes with that. I'm super competitive and I like to win. But the thing about all of my winning and competing is that it wears me out. It's an endless and exhausting cycle of trying to prove myself. To prove I'm acceptable, to prove I'm enough, to prove I fit in. But the problem with this kind of fitting in, this type of inclusion, is that it requires the exclusion of others. In order for me to fit in, others can't. Which sucks, because inclusion by exclusion is also the lifeblood of racism, partisan politics, and fundamental religion. Exclusivity demands I must fight to stay on top. And staying on top is exhausting. After years of staying on top, I finally burnt out in 2008. I walked away from unprecedented success at the peak of my career. My wife and I sold everything and we lived in a camper for a year. A year of travel might sound like an easy thing for most of you and fair enough, but for someone so wrapped up in what I did as the source of my worth, not doing anything was disorienting. It wrecked me. I wrestled with a constant sense of inadequacy. I wasn't able to separate who I was from what I did. 
It was a painful process and one that didn't end with a neat little bow tied around it when we got back. I still struggle with bouts of insecurity, inadequacy, self-loathing. We all do. It's easier for me to receive love and acceptance from others as long as I feel like I'm earning, achieving, or deserving it. But that paradigm poisons the way I see myself and those around me. Which brings me to a really interesting thing that happened to me at a party last year. A life-defining moment. We were all hanging out, and I decided to go streaking. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> so I ran around naked for a while, and then I jumped in the river, and everyone was laughing, and it felt good. And I was having a lot of fun until some idiot yelled, that is a small penis. Now, I don't know who he was, but I felt really sorry for the guy with the small penis. <laughs> I tried to play it off, but I couldn't help but wonder, was it true? Few things hurt like being literally or figuratively naked, daring enough to be yourself, only to have someone pretty much say, hey, you don't have what it takes, who do you think you are? And worse, it came from someone sitting fully clothed on the sidelines, <laughs> right? revealing our human nature to choose spectating over participating. I think one of the prevalent misconceptions in our culture is that criticizing is the same as participating. It's not the same thing. I don't think blasting religious and political posts on Facebook is taking the stand we think it is for whatever we believe in. In fact, I think it might literally be the very least we can actually do to participate in our lives. <laughs> Preach! Firing off 140 character tweets with simple solutions to life's incredibly, insanely complex problems is not participation. It's spam advertising for our arrogant ignorance and inability to meaningfully connect with each other. So there I was, 33 years old, and I'd never had a single person in my entire life say anything about the size of my junk. I remember having a pretty big one when I was a kid. <laughs> but then again, I also had tiny hands. <laughs> I had to know if I measured up. So I looked up the average penis size online. <laughs> and as I took out a yardstick to measure myself, <laughs> there it is. The reality of the situation hit me. This was gonna be a paradigm shifter. Because even though I know that my genitals have nothing to do with my self-worth or value, guess what? I don't want a small penis! <laughs> I want a big one! So I can tell others with small ones that size doesn't matter. <laughs> like I said before, I want to measure up before I tell others it's okay for them not to. As if to say, it's okay if you don't have what it takes. I've got enough of what it takes for both of us. <laughs> so as I measured myself, as many of you men will be doing tonight. <laughs> it dawned on me that if I was bigger than average, I wasn't going to have to accept myself even though I didn't measure it up. I was going to miss out on that opportunity. But if I was smaller than average, oh God, I was, I was going to have to accept myself even though I didn't measure up. So at only nine inches long, I'm below average in penis size. <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? I'm not really nine inches. But I am below average. At this point, you might want some concrete answers. <laughs> By the way, I will be at the after party, and yes, you do want to party with me. So I'm sure you have questions like, okay, all right, who are we, and, and, and why are we so valuable then, and, and, and why is this guy still talking about his penis? <laughs> but I'm not offering my answers. I'm offering you an invitation to discover your own. 
This idea worth spreading isn't an answer to be consumed and discarded. I don't want to explain your value to you. I want you to experience it for yourself. It's the only way this works. If you want to find your true self, you got to set your false self on fire. I can't do it for you. I can only lead the way by lighting myself on fire first. I'm inviting you to dive inward instead of outward, to find intrinsic worth instead of external affirmation. I'm welcoming you into your inherent enoughness to discover a self-worth that connects us all together and a profound sense of sameness without discrediting our incredible uniqueness. Because we're all incredibly unique and special, just like everybody else. Oh, and if being unique and special just like everybody else sounds absurd and it pisses you off, you're on the right track. It pisses me off too. Because when you realize this isn't something you can earn or achieve, your inner earner and achiever is going to get upset. But the part of you that knows you can't stay on top forever is going to be able to breathe again. With great resistance comes great relief. My idea worth spreading is that we're lucky when we don't measure up, when we don't fit in, when we don't have what it takes, because then we have a chance to uncover who we really are. It's our weakness and failures that show us how perfectly we fit in when we refuse to measure our self-worth and sense of belonging against the poisonous paradigm of earning, achieving, and fitting in. Sometimes if you want to find out who you really are, you got to get real clear on who you aren't. We're human beings, not human doings. So if your boobs are too small or your butt's too big or your butt's too small and your boobs too big or whatever society's telling you isn't enough about you, you're welcome to explore what it really means to be enough. If some idiot says you have a small penis or if your freaking hair's falling out for no reason <laughs> or if people think you're a weirdo for being a little too honest in your talk today, Considered a personalized, handmade, engraved invitation to finally be free. You've hit the jackpot when you're at the end of your rope, hitting rock bottom with nothing left to lose. Because it's only when you've lost it all that you can see how much you really have and how valuable and enough you've been all along. We're lovable, we're acceptable. And we're enough, just as we are, not as we should be. Now that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much.